What's good guys, Angel of the Night here. We are back again with another Black 2, White 2 battle and today's match is up against the Shmoo Master. I apologize if I pronounce your name incorrectly. I've never said it before nor heard it, uh, so my bad. <laughs> They're gonna lead in here with a Rhyperior. I'm gonna lead in with my Simipore. Now, of course, as you guys know, there is a type disadvantage here for the Rhyperior, so they're gonna swap out. They're gonna go to the Ferrothorn. We're gonna end up missing our Hydro Pump. So that's actually probably a good thing that we actually had that swap out earlier. Uh, we're gonna swap out our Simipore. We're gonna go in to our Espeon. Nine out of 10 times, Ferrothorn's gonna go and set up some sort of spikes or stealth rocks. So we're just gonna use our Magic Bounce and bounce those back over to the Ferrothorn side. So any kind of Pokemon that comes in, if they are on the ground and not flying, they should actually be uh, hit by the spikes. And of course, it's going to destroy any kind of a sash on the opposing side. We go in, we get the Calm Mind here. Here's the Gyro Ball. And of course, Gyro Ball is going to be able to make a direct hit into the Espeon. Unfortunately for us, it does actually one hit KO. This is a critical hit. Um, obviously, the slower the Pokemon, the better the Gyro Ball is. Uh, so we're going to send in our Zapdos here this time. Now Zapdos, of course, does have the Heat Wave attack. Makes perfect sense to bring it in versus the Ferrothorn here at this time. They are going to swap out. Obviously, everybody who's battled in Gen 5 knows that Heat Wave is a big deal on Zapdos in this gen. So uh, they bring in Manectric. They get hurt by the spikes. And of course, here we go with the Heat Wave. Heat Wave is actually going to make contact with the Manectric, which is fantastic because it doesn't always hit. Uh, that is going to pick up the KO, and that is the first Pokemon down onto our opponent's side. Next Pokemon coming in is back into the Rhyperior. Obviously, we don't want to stay in here with our Zapdos. Uh, Zapdos is, I believe, choice spec, so we're actually going to swap out our Zapdos. We're going to go back in with our Rhyperior. Now, obviously, this was a great time to do the swap in because obviously a rock type move is going to come in here. We're actually going to see the rock blast. Uh, honestly, if it was a stone edge, I still would have done the swap anyways. Now, Rock Blast does hit multiple times in the row. In this situation here, it only hits twice. And of course, both Rhyperiors are going to get some health back from the Leftovers. Now, back in the day, Leftovers was always a thing to have on Rhyperior. You never really see anybody else have any other kind of moves other than like a band. Uh, we're gonna go in for an Earthquake here as well on our side, so that way we can get some decent damage off onto that Rhyperior. Super effective play. Here comes the Stealth Rocks. Definitely a good choice to set them up. However, probably not the best situation right at this time. Uh, Rhyperior versus Rhyperior. Obviously, there is some ground type advantage to some of those moves. Uh, and of course, you know, they're also extremely weak to those ground type plays. Uh, they're going to swap out their Rhyperior. They're actually going to go back in to spike the Ferrothorn. Uh, and the only idea that I can come up with here at this time, obviously, uh, we are going to go in with the Earthquake here. Not really going to be able to do very much. It is a grass type Pokemon after all. Uh, however, um, the only play that I can think of here is I actually have a substituting focus punching Rhyperior. And you know what? This is something that actually throws a lot of people off with my Rhyperior. Uh, if I go for that sub punch, they don't really know how to really deal with it when it comes up. Uh, they ended up going to go in for the Leech Seed. They were going to try to set up to get health back every turn. We are getting our leftovers, of course. They too are also getting some HP back. And uh, you know what? We've got a substitute here. We might as well go for the Focus Punch. So Focus Punch should actually be super effective onto that Ferrothorn. They're going to go in for the Power Whip. Now Power Whip does take a hit onto Rhyperior and my Substitute fades. Now, of course, as you guys know, a Substitute, we don't receive any damage from that attack. So we actually managed to get that Focus Punch off. Uh, we do not get distracted and that is going to be able to pick up the KO onto the Ferrothorn. That is a huge play right there. Ferrothorn is one of those Pokemon that if you bring it in, you have nothing for it. Uh, you're going to be really messed up because that thing has some crazy bulk and every time you kind of do any kind of physical damage to it, you also lose some HP as well. Uh, so he's going to come in now with his Alakazam. We're actually going to swap out. I really wish I still had my Espeon here for this, but unfortunately not. We're going to go into Snorlax. Now Snorlax, of course, in Generation 5, it is a very good Pokemon to have some special defense with. Uh, they're going to go in for a Focus Blast here and surprisingly enough, that actually makes contact. Focus Blast is not one of those moves that you can really rely on. It's kind of there, but you know, you only choose it in the scenario where you absolutely have to get this attack off. 
Uh, as you can see, and this is the accuracy on it is not that great. Uh, we get a pursuit. Pursuit was probably my best option here because I was actually predicting that they were going to swap out the Alakazam. Uh, pursuit, if a Pokemon did swap out, it would actually hit first. Um, so anyways, it actually holds on by a, a Focus Sash. Um, I don't want to risk getting hit by a Focus Blast, and it would just be my luck that I would get hit by it. I decided to bring in uh, Lawrence in this situation here, bring in the Zapdos. Uh, we get a little bit of damage there from the Stealth Rocks, that's perfectly fine. Uh, Alakazam ends up going in for the Psychic. Now I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I should be able to survive this. I have some pretty decent special defense onto Lawrence, um, but uh, you know, my special defense does fall here. We actually managed to get quite a bit of... Uh, damage by that psychic and of course the alakazam does outspeed there once again uh probably not the best choice to swap to be quite honest with you uh we ended up bringing in uh snorlax here once again uh, snorlax is pretty much going to be the only thing that i can have that can really do some damage here to this alakazam they end up going for the psychic and i'm like oh you know what i'm gonna be able to survive this not a problem nope just snorlax is down <laughs> can't do anything now uh, I decided to bring in my Simipore. Simipore does have some decent speed, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what, maybe I can do something here with the Simipore. Uh, they're going to go in for the Psychic attack here. This is actually going to hit Ashley. Uh, we live by eight hit points, guys. Eight hit points is insane. We also get our special attack boost from our Pattaya Berry. We're going to go in for the Grass Knot here, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what, it's probably a good choice. Get something off that I can actually get some damage with. Uh, Excadrill comes in here now. Now, this is kind of one of those situations where I'm like, why did you bring in Excadrill without the sand? Uh, this was actually a misplay on my opponent's side. Uh, they were like, oh, why did I do that? But you know what? We get the Hydro Pump off here. And I'm pretty happy that I actually made contact because Hydro Pump is super risky. Uh, most people would probably run Surf with their Simipore, but I actually go for the Hydro Pump here. Back in the day, I like to live dangerously. Uh, Tyranitar coming into play here. Of course, Hi uh, Tyranitar is, uh, you know, something that you would normally pair with your Excadrill. This is something that should have come in before Excadrill, to be quite honest. It would have boosted up your speed with the, uh, s with the Sand Rush. We managed to get another Hydro Pump off here. This is fantastic. We've, we've had that Pattaya boost, boosted up our special attack. We get a really good Hydro Pump off here. This is going to be able to take the Tyranitar down into the red zone. He comes in with a Crunch, being able to pick up the KO with Ashley. And uh, you know what? Ashley did a decent amount of work. And now it's time to bring in the GOAT, Isabelle. Isabelle, by far my favorite dragon. If you guys have not seen my Gen 5 Wi-Fi battles back in the day, Haxorus Isabel used to run wild. So here we go with the Dragon Claw, and of course that is gonna be able to pick up the KO off onto the T-Tar, and T-Tar is down. One more Pokemon to go, and that's gonna be the Rhyperior. Now of course this is a Life Orb version of Isabel. Um, I do have a Choice Scarf version and a couple of other variants with the Yachi Berry and whatnot, but this is pretty much the OG Isabel right here. Uh, Rhyperior comes in, we're gonna go for the Earthquake, and that should pick up the KO off onto the Rhyperior. So, good game, uh, Shmoo Master. thank you very much for the battle. If you guys want to battle in Gen 5, be sure to take a look at the tutorial in the description below, and hit me up on Discord. Peace out.